All right, guys, let's let's get it over with. Um, this was not a good week if you're a Seahawks fan. Not good. Uh, you win a game in San Francisco, and it feels good for a minute, but the week started immediately. You get smacked in the face with talk of Cam Chancellor, <clears throat> Cliff Averill, and Malik McDowell possibly never playing NFL football again. <clears throat> now, in the case of Cliff Averill, we already kind of suspect things might be headed that way. Um, Malik McDowell, you know, we never had him really, so I don't know how emotional you can really feel about that, but still, the guy's a freaking idiot, and it sucks. And now we get the Cam Chancellor news. He is going to have to make some tough decisions about his career. And it is entirely possible that all three of those guys will never play NFL football again. So that was great. That's, you know, the young cornerstone of the defensive line, you hope. The um, veteran strong safety who has made so many big plays for you. And the veteran defensive end who just holds it down against the run, against the pass, and does everything you could want from a defensive end in a 4-3 defense. And wasn't really feeling that. And um, past that, the week goes on. And not only do we have a million injury problems from the games, but it seems like the guys can't even stay healthy in practice. Um... Obviously, on top of the three I just mentioned, which we've known about for a little while now, Abushi, he's out, but hopefully that doesn't matter because he's not starting anymore. Uh, Dwayne Brown, questionable. Jimmy Graham, questionable. Luke Wilson, we don't know. Um, Deion Jordan, probably not going to play. Bobby Wagner. Now, all these guys are probably going to play. But the fact that we cannot keep these guys healthy to the point where they can actually put in a full week of practice and, you know, go out there and, you know, be a part of things and not have anything lingering into the game that might slow them a little bit or interfere with their ability to play effective football, it's not good. And on top of all that, Earl Thomas apparently got injured in practice on Thursday He's questionable. I'm sure he's going to play. And then Nazir Jones got injured at some point in practice this week. He's doubtful. Probably not going to play tomorrow. So, you know, that's just what we need, right? On a season that is already about to get thrown off the tracks completely by injury after injury after injury, it just keeps piling on. We can't even stay healthy outside of the games, it seems like. So... We took a lot of punches this week, guys, and tomorrow night, um, 20 hours from now, give or take, there's another big punch possibly waiting for us. We're hosting the 10-1, and uh, nine-game winning streak, franchi all-time franchise best start Philadelphia Eagles with their superstar second-year quarterback and their elite defensive front seven and their pass rush and their running game and their offensive line and everything, man. So let's talk about some of the positives here because I just rolled through a big list of negatives. Look, I've gotten on Russell Wilson in the last few videos and people have gotten on me for getting on him. He's still one of the best quarterbacks in the league. We've got good targets for him in the passing game. Tyler Lockett is starting to really come back from that injury he had last year. Jimmy Graham is being utilized effectively. Doug Baldwin is Doug Baldwin. Um, the offensive line might be good. A little early to say. Offensive line might be okay. The starters, they seem like they have something there with the Jokel and Brown and Britt. And obviously, Postic has problems as a rookie, but he's playing okay. Um, a Fetty is still a Fetty, but it's starting to come together. Uh, the defensive front seven is still pretty formidable. 
yeah, there is some positive stuff going on with this team. But right now, it's tough to see all of that. So I just wanted to go ahead and list through all of it because it's easy to lose track of the things you should be happy about because there's a lot to be unhappy about. We'll talk more about, you know, long-term stuff in other videos because this video is going to be about the game tomorrow and what can be possibly coming to save us from <clears throat> a really intimidating home game, primetime game against the Philly Eagles. And I feel like our fate in this game really comes down to the two guys that I've been pretty hard on two guys who look like they're going to the Hall of Fame at some point in their career, but two guys that I've been critical of this year because I feel like they've deserved it a little bit. I mean, we're used to our defense coming to save us in situations like this, but defense, they're not going to save us this week, guys. Our defensive line, it is solid. Even with the injuries, even with the problems it's having, that defensive line is rock solid, but... That offensive line in Philadelphia, they lose Jason Peters, it barely phases them. That is a great offensive line, and our pass rush, our defensive line, it can't, it can barely dictate the game against you know mediocre offensive lines. How are they going to do it against this? Maybe the best offensive line in football. So no, the pass rush is not going to save us. Front seven is not going to save us. Um, you know, Philly runs the ball really well. That's going to be a fun match, but they're not going to bail us out. Our secondary is shot. Luckily, we're getting Shaquille Griffin back, and Jeremy Lane looks like he's finally healthy, but those guys, they're not going to save us. Uh, you know, special teams, they're not going to save us. Um, you know, sorry, our special teams, it's gotten better the last couple weeks culminating in last week where we didn't have that many penalties against the 49ers, but, you know, Philadelphia, their special teams unit, they're kicking 61-yard game-winning field goals. Our kicker can't even get enough leg to kick a 51-yard game tying field goal, so that's not going to save us. Um, offensive line, it's not going to save us. Uh, even if the offensive line is good, which I suspect that it now is, that Philly pass rush, you know, Brandon Graham, uh, Fletcher Cox, Derek Barnett, monsters up front they got. And we cannot expect our offensive line to just hold the fort every single play. There is going to be quite a bit of Russell Wilson running around back in the pocket, no matter how good our offensive line plays. That's just the reality of the situation. Um, basically... Who is going to come and save us tomorrow, if anybody? I say two guys. Two guys who could tip the balance in this game. Because, just being real, the balance is pretty strongly in Philadelphia's favor right now. But the guy who can tip the balance on the field is Russell Wilson. We've got good receivers. We've got a good tight end. Philadelphia's secondary, they're good. They've got, you know, Malcolm Jenkins. They've got uh, Ronald Darby back. That's a good secondary, but there are going to be matchups there that we can win. And it's going to be up to Russell Wilson in this passing game to do it because there's no running the ball against that Philadelphia front seven. But that's just the reality of the situation. There's no long-form, um, you know, passing plays where Russell Wilson takes a seven-step drop and camps back there for eight seconds. Not in a game like this. It is quite simply <clears throat> Russell Wilson making quick, good decisions, accurate throws, and leading the team down the field repeatedly to keep the defense off the field and to keep their defense on the field. He's the guy who can be an X-factor and possibly tip a game towards us when we look outmatched in so many other ways. And the other guy is Pete Carroll. I've been hard on Pete, but I do believe that at this point, he is a better head coach than Doug Peterson. He has more experience in the NFL than Doug Peterson. 
and this would be a nice time for him to give us a, an advantage some kind of edge in this game where we get more out of our talent than they get out of their talent where we just maximize our potential better than they do and that's how we're gonna win this game guys we're putting it on Russell and P those guys gotta go get it done for us because we're not gonna shut down the Eagles offense no matter what we do out there tomorrow it's just not gonna happen we're not going to run over their front seven. Nothing like that is going to happen, guys. None of those things are going to come out of nowhere and just completely bail us out. And we're here at the end of the game tomorrow just thinking, wow, I can't believe we ran for 180 yards. I can't believe Carson Wentz threw four picks. I can't believe Tyler Lockett took two punt returns for touchdowns. It's not going to happen. The only way that... I can see us talking about a victory tomorrow is through the arm of Russell Wilson and through the mind of Pete Carroll. And it's been a rough week. I myself am having a little bit of a rough day. Uh, I'm gonna gonna get on Assassin's Creed Origins in a minute here. Try to uh, you know get past it, but um, that's all you can say. Russell Wilson, he's a dark horse MVP candidate, playing really good football. I think he can be better. If he wants to win MVP this year, tomorrow's the kind of game you really have to show up for. So let's see what you got. Impress me. I'll be on here tomorrow, win or lose, and hopefully we'll be talking about a surprise upset victory because very few Seahawks fans seem to be feeling it, but um, only the roster can give us a reason to feel it. So see y'all tomorrow.